education when it comes to condo law and things like that. Are, yes. Do you have any, because this is a lot of voters obviously live in associations, do you yes. have any uh, ideas, issues uh, that you'll bring to the table with regard to some of those uh, laws that seem to be changing every year? <coughs> well, uh, yes and no. I mean, that condo law issues are certainly something that I will be able to bring my background to bear on when brought forth, but those are not the main areas of my legislative platform. So um, I will be, I think I'll be a good resource for other legislators and I'll certainly be thoughtful and, and but my main goal is to, to take my three-pronged platform and develop uh, legislation that will help achieve those things for Southwest Florida. Uh, Gary Obershon, uh, when he has met with us in the past, uh, said that he introduced as rules chairman the repealer bills. That is basically if you received, if you uh, proposed a bill that would repeal a, a piece of legislation, you would get another bill that you could file as well. Do you have any specific pieces of legislation that you'd like to see repealed? Oh, goodness. Um, actually, I had not thought about that, so I don't have, uh, I do not have one specifically uh, in mind. Okay. There's an issue that affects some of the older parts of Lee County and probably other communities throughout the state um, concerning deed restrictions. Um, this is separate from condominiums okay. and separate from the more the newer homeowners associations that have their own regulations. But there is a group of probably in the 60s, 70s, and 80s okay. of developments that relied on deed restrictions to maintain property values and to have a certain cohesiveness and community kind of personality. Yes. And as time goes by, those deed restrictions are beginning to expire. Mm -hmm. And the state legislature, the legislation currently requires incredibly high numbers. I don't know if it's 100%, but it's a very big number to reinstate those deed restrictions and that is going to have an impact on these communities property values. I don't know if you're familiar with this problem and can address it and if not I guess I'm just bringing it to your attention. Right, I am familiar with deed restrictions um, and I am familiar with the necessity to have a, a you know a very super majority in most instances to be able to get them reinstated. At the same time, um, I mean, there is there is a means in which to do it, and if the community feels strongly that their property damage, I mean, their property values will be damaged or reduced, then I think that it's up to the community members to decide that and make that decision and vote to retain them. I don't think it's the legislature's place to um, put those restrictions back in place, and the community members don't want to. Um, so I, I, I just don't think that's our place to voice that on the community if they don't want it. And they have the opportunity to vote for it if they'd like. So you support maintaining the, the supermajority voting? Um, if there would be the possibility of changing it, but again, if you don't have that, then you also open yourself, if you don't have that majority, you also open yourself up to divisiveness in the neighborhood because then you might have, if it's just a simple, majority uh, then you might have a large block of people that don't want it and a large uh, you know slightly larger block that do and it brings divisiveness into the community and as someone who deals with that on a daily basis in our planned communities that can be uh, um, equally as damaging um, so I would I wouldn't say whether I can you know conclusively decide not to do that but I would have to look at that very carefully due to the budgetary constraints in the state do you ever see yourself voting for any new taxes um, you know, as a conservative Republican, I, my goal is to have more taxpayers and uh, fewer taxes. I think uh, I don't want to get pigeonholed at any time to say that I will never raise taxes or a fee, which is also a tax. I think there may be certain instances where it would be a necessity for the betterment of our state or our community, but it's my philosophy to limit and reduce taxes to the extent that I can on any given day. And related to that, uh, Governor Scott, when he uh, took office, talked about the axis of unemployment, which included regulation and, uh, and taxes, uh, for example. 
do you, uh, how do you think he has done uh, in his two years in office so far? Um, well, I can answer the latter part of your question. I'm not, wasn't, I'm not really clear on what you're referring to in the first part. But as far as uh, his job, I think that he has done to a large degree what he said he was going to do in his platform. And he was uh, elected based on, on that platform. So I applaud him for following through on what he said he was going to do. Having said that, I know that um, certain people um, aren't uh, happy with uh, what he's accomplished in office, but again, I, I think that he's done exactly what he said he was going to do. There's one issue where he's, he's learned, you know, certainly people learn on the job and are becoming flexible, for example, on the E-Verify issue with regard mm -hmm. to agricultural workers. Mm -hmm. um, Citrus Goers have said that as much as 70% of the workforce here uh, is undocumented immigrants. and. The governor recently said that he would uh, he didn't want Florida to be at a competitive disadvantage. Immigration bills have come up in Arizona and Utah and other states uh, in the South. Would you touch that subject in Tallahassee? Well, I think it, of course it is a federal issue. So I I would like to see our federal government step up and address that. If we don't get that um, focus from the federal government on this issue, I think it's a very important one to Florida, and we would have to take a look at considering something. Having said that, we do have things that we can do already. Um, I mean, I, there are laws on the books that we can deport people that are here illegally, that are committing crimes, that are in our jails, and I would be certainly supportive of doing that. Um, I also do not um, support people that are here illegally being able to take advantage of, advantage of Florida's services because it is quite expensive, so I would try to find ways to uh, limit access to services for people who are not on a path to citizenship. We have about five minutes left of the interview. Do you agree with the number of the uh, suits that have been filed by the state by Pam Bondi with regard to uh, Affordable Care Act and uh, I'm sorry, the what? Affordable Care Act, uh, Obamacare. Yes. And others, uh, because it is a state uh, issue. Um, how do you feel about the state getting involved in federal uh, issues such as that and immigration? And immigration? Well, and immigration okay. as another well, possibility. Well, again, I think as I, I said a moment ago, I think on the immigration, I'd like to see the federal government um, step up and, and take... Failing that? Failing that, I think we need to consider doing something. I would like to have our borders secure. I would like to have people not taking advantage of, of the services again, because we ha are, have great budgetary restraints here in Florida, as you know. And we need to be able to provide services to our, our citizenry that are here. Uh, as far as Pam Bonney, I think that she's well within her rights and doing the best job uh, that she can for Florida citizens to challenge something that she feels is, is unconstitutional and it's being thrust upon Florida. Um, and so the outcome of that will be very interesting. Um, I'll look forward to seeing that. As a business owner, uh, we grapple with the cost of insurance every day. Um, you know, it's very expensive. At the same time, I don't want to be uh, required by the federal government to take on all the, the all the different things that Obamacare would require us to do. I'd like to streamline regulation, streamline government intervention as, as a Republican, not add on to it. So I'm, I would like to see less of that kind of uh, government uh, involvement in our businesses and in, in our lives. And following up to Dick's question about gambling, uh, Pam Bondi has um, instituted an, an order saying that no other county can have slots other than Broward and uh, Miami-Dade because that was allowed by the legislature. Um, and so that's why the question becomes, uh, would you as a legislator uh, agree to have other counties uh, have gambling, uh, I guess, if there is a referendum in favor of something? Um, if there's a referendum and the county or you know, area decides that, I think that that's, that's up to the voters, what and, they want. And should it be 50% or should it be 60% like constitutional amendments in the state? Yeah, that's a good question, and I'd, I'd have to think about that. Thank you. Any other questions before we conclude? Well, are there any final thoughts that you have for us and for the public? Uh, well, uh, just that I, I feel like I know the community very well. Um, I have a tireless work ethic and I'm ready to go and serve our community in Tallahassee and would appreciate uh, the opportunity to do that. So, thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Best of success to you. Thank you.